Boyd Lady Broncos. Another 9-9 nine and nine record for the team. They're even 500 so far through the year. I'm joined by their head coach, Rochelle Vaughn. And coach, thanks again for joining us here today. Thank you for having me. So going into this year, you're the, a new, co new basketball coach, new coaching staff for the players. So how have they adjusted to the new coaching staff? I think um, as the days go by, the months go on, that we're starting to fill each other out. We have a lot of meetings as far as up outside of basketball to make sure everybody's on the same page. So I think they're starting to understand what we want this year to let, lay the foundation of success here. Um, they're buying into working hard every single day, being consistent every single day, and hopefully we get, keep getting better every day. For you, what have been a couple of your key wins this year? I think for us, um, we had a good win this past week against Carrollton Ranch View. Um, our girls realized that, hey, we can play with anybody. Um, we also had a couple of key wins. We played Frisco Centennial. They have a D1 athlete who's going to Arkansas, and we stepped up and shut them down. So I think for us, just being consistent, even when we lose um, and give ourselves a chance, is the biggest thing that we're learning. The Skyline game, as you were mentioning to me before we went on, that that was a loss that you had, but you were within six points in the last couple of minutes, and Skyline's a very good team. And the injury bug has really hit your team that so far you know, here lately, and so you're missing a lot of key players. Yeah, in the Skyline game, we were missing two of our starters. Um, they were out, one was sick, and one had a concussion. So that kind of hurt us. One of them was Haley Carruthers, who kind of does everything for us. But I was really proud of our team because we rallied around. We could have gave in to them. They're much bigger than we are. But we kind of all fought through it and kept it close and gave ourselves a chance. And that's all you can ask for, is to have a chance to win at the end. Haley's a player that has had to step into kind of the spotlight this year. She's the, now the player that really the offense runs through her. Mm -hmm. How has she adjusted to that role? I think slowly she's maturing into being our go-to uh, player, game in and game out, getting people in the right spots, playing a lot of minutes, um, but playing smart. I think at the beginning of the year, I was begging her to shoot. I'm like, please shoot the ball. Um, now she's getting to the point where she's getting 15 points a game. At first, she was only having her about six. Um, she was overpassing. So for her and for us to be successful, she has to be consistent around 15 to 20 points a game for us to be, have a chance at winning. Julia Hendricks, another player for you that has, has been somebody that's averaged a couple of double doubles lately that you're expecting to really come around for the district play. Yeah, um, we look to Julia to rebound for us. She has a knack for finding the basketball. Um, she's very, very athletic. We like to use her at the front of our press when we do press. Um, I think for us and for her, if she can average a double double, we will be much better long term. Um, but our biggest thing for her is keeping her engaged when something doesn't go well for her. How tough is that sometimes with the players because you're out there and you're playing with your emotion, you're fighting hard, and then when things don't go your way, obviously the initial reaction is to kind of, you know, hang your head a little mm -hmm. bit, to kind of drag up and down the court. What is it as a coach that you have to do to, to help players keep their focus throughout the whole entire game? Well, it's something we preach every day in practice. Um, we try to put them in situations that they're going to be in in the game and make them fail. So when it happens in the game, they know how to react and keep playing because um, you can't get that back, but you can make the next play. So that's what we're building here is that if you make a mistake, that's part of life. How do you respond now? So that's our biggest challenge with this group is getting them to keep playing through the mistakes. And we're getting better at it as the season goes on. Jordan Brightwell is one of the players that has been injured lately that you're hoping to get back later for district play. Also, Michaela Gonzalez, how has it been with their, you know, both unique situations trying to manage them? Um, well, JJ or Jordan has a concussion, so, you know, we just want her to be healthy long term. So whenever our trainers and doctors say she can come back, we'll slowly bring her back, hopefully by January 4th. Michaela's a little bit different in that she is a cancer survivor, so we have to kind of watch how much we play her in general. We try to make her play two to three minutes, and then she just sprained her ankle. Um, so for her, it's just understanding her body, and I think she understands it the best. She'll let me know when she needs a sub because um, she's been through the chemo. She's been through um, the radiation, things like that. So for her and for us, it's kind of just watching her body language because she'll say she's fine, but then her body would tell us, okay, she's come out for a little bit. So the biggest thing as a coaching staff is make sure our players are healthy long term because there's more to basketball than just in high school. What has her particular presence on the floor done for the team, being a cancer survivor? I think KK is our emotional leader. She's the one that we rally around. She fights. So I think our team sees her and how hard she plays. 
and it's, they have a sense of we have to play hard because she's playing hard. She can do it. Everybody can do it. Going into district play, you've touched on the Carrollton Ranchview game that you just played, 66-45, so a, yeah. a big score line, but Ranchview, a good team, and your players told you that they felt like that is a turnaround game for their entire season. Right. Yeah, I think they realized that everybody got to play. I think everybody scored that game. But most importantly, our defense was clicking. We had everybody on the same page. We were talking. Um, and we were playing together. And I think for them, it was exciting for them to see that, hey, the coaches are right. We play together. We can be successful, especially moving forward, getting ready for district. In high school basketball, of course, there is no shot clock. So no. theoretically, if you wanted, you could dribble out the quarter, just, just passing back and forth. How, how do you manage on offense and on defense mm -hmm. that non-shot clock factor? I think for us, um, our girls have to be smarter, uh, taking quality shots, and they're realizing what's, for each player, a quality shot. Everybody can't shoot a three. We don't want to shoot the ball quick because we don't have big players inside, and we're not the best shooters. But if we work our offense, we can get high percentage shots as far as in the paint is concerned. I think defensively, we try to slow people down because we're not as quick or athletic as, say, a Plano West. We're not as big as a Plano. So we have to use a lot of I call them schemes, to kind of make them think about what they want to do so we give ourselves a chance to block them out and put pressure on them without getting out of position. You're in a district with some intimidating names. I was <laughs> just at the Allen DeSoto football playoff semifinal this weekend, and somebody's asked me, how many people go to Allen? Because they're big. You know, they're, <laughs> it's a huge school, so when you're, you know, a, even though Boyd has a reasonably good-sized high school, going up against these you know, humongous schools that they have unlimited talent pool, basically. Yeah. How do you help your team going into the district get over the intimidating factor and realize they can play with these teams? I think for us, our schedule leading up to district has helped us and has prepared us. We played Duncanville. We played the Skyline. Um, and those teams are on par, I guess, with Plano West, who's ranked in the state, with the Plano who's played with those teams and competed well against them. So I think our girls understand that, hey, we play with these teams. They're no different from playing our district opponents. If we do what we're supposed to do and play boy basketball, we have a good chance of being successful. Coach Vaughn, thanks again for joining us Thank here today on Sports me. Talk. From McKinney Boyd, Lady Broncos, a 9-9 nine nine record so far, but it seems like they have just started to turn the corner. Expect their best play coming up in District 10-5A.